Hey guys, how's it going? My name is Phil. Welcome to Phil's Computer Lab and another video. Recently, we built the interactive retro gamer where you guys told me which components should go into the computer. Based around that project, I did various videos to kind of address uh, some of your comments. We looked at Windows 98 SE performance and how it compares with Millennium and 2000. And the final operating system and also the final video to do with this project is looking at the performance of Windows XP. Now that's a classic, I know XP very well and I think most of you do. My very first XP experience have to do with some virus, I think it's called the Blaster virus. Basically, as soon as you went online, it would start re rebooting your machine and that was before the first service pack where the firewall was disabled. But anyway, so let's find out in this video how I went with the machine with the Windows 2000, I ran into a few issues. However, that also gained me some knowledge uh, with the SATA controller and other bits and pieces. So in the video, I will talk a little bit about uh, the installation process and any uh, issues or any observations. And then we have a look at some benchmarks. How does XP uh, benchmark compared to 98 SE and Windows Millennium? And at the end, a conclusion. So the machine we're using has a socket A motherboard with a VIA KT600 chipset, an Athlon 1 gigahertz, 2 gig of RAM, a PowerVR Cairo 2 GPU, a Promise SATA 150 TX4 controller, 120 gig SSD and an Auto G2 ZS sound card. The BIOS settings are identical and by pressing Control F1 I got access to the memory timings and also made sure that they are identical to the benchmarks performed under 98 and Millennium. Installing Windows XP is straightforward. I've done it many times and I believe most of you have as well. You need to press the F6 key at the beginning of the, of the installation process to load the SATA driver from the floppy drive. Now, Promise still have all the drivers on the website, so that was really easy to do. XP also supports quick formatting, which makes things a little bit faster compared to Windows 2000, for example, which doesn't have the quick format option. In terms of drivers, the VIA drivers are universal driver packages which support 98 Millennium 2000 and XP, so I used the same drivers. I tried installing the USB 2.0 driver and it told me I need Service Pack 1. So I really need the USB 2 speed because otherwise copying the games over takes too long. So I quickly installed the Service Pack 1 update and after that I was up and running. For the Video card, I also used the same driver version number as with 98 Millennium in 2000. Although PowerVR do have unique driver packages for uh, Windows 98 and Millennium and also a unique driver package for 2000 as well as their own driver for Windows XP. In terms of operating system tweaks, I made sure that the power profile is turned on and I went into the PowerVR driver and disabled VSync for benchmarking. I didn't run into any major issues. I've encountered the same software issues that I ran into Windows 2000 and that is 3 Mark 99 Max not working. It throws an error to do with the DirectX version. The GOG release of Quake 2 also threw the same error, but that was easy to fix. I already knew what the problem was. I just have to rename one of the DLL files and then everything is up and running. After that, all the benchmarks completed. I didn't have any issues. I also tried the GOG installers and they display correctly. All the buttons are uh, on the screen. That is That was different with Windows 2000 Service Pack 4. You couldn't see some of the buttons. So you had to fly blind by pressing tab and enter. It's still workable, but uh, surprised me a little bit. The main issue I have with Windows XP is really the online activation. I don't connect the machine to the computer, so I usually use the 30-day trial period. Most of my projects, they don't take too long, so that's fine for me, but I might be moving my graphics benchmarking machine to Windows XP, so I will have to find a better solution around that. So I guess it's time to look at the performance. First up, we've got 3D Mark 2000. And here we can see that Windows XP Service Pack 1 is a little bit behind all the other operating systems. It's not a massive difference, but it is still measurable. In Expendable, we can see that Windows 98 SE is the quickest, followed by Millennium Edition, and then Windows 2000 and Windows XP are a little bit behind. But once again, the differences are really tiny. In Dragon, we can see the same trend. Windows 98 SE and Millennium are in the front 
with Windows 2000 and XP a little bit behind. Now those of you who watched the previous video, you know that I had some issues with OpenGL on the Windows 2000, so no results unfortunately. However, we've got results for Windows XP and actually GL Quake runs fastest on Windows XP. Same goes for Quake 2, Windows XP in the lead with around 135 FPS. The trend continues although the lead is a lot smaller, but even in Quake 3, XP edges out a small lead. In Series M, however, there's not much difference. All operating systems perform mostly on the same level. You could argue that Windows XP is a little bit behind, but uh, really the difference is nothing. So looking at the performance results, it's actually quite interesting to see that the OpenGL games, especially the Quake games, run faster under Windows XP. Again, the lead is uh, not big, but it is measurable. And under 3 Mark Expandable and Dragon, however, Windows XP is a little bit behind, so you're still better off with Windows 98. So those of you who want to set records with 3 Mark, it looks like Windows 98 SE is the operating system to go for. Apart from that, I had no other major issues with Windows XP. We just ran into a few software compatibility issues with 3 Mark 99 Max um, and also Quake 2. But usually there are some workarounds. You just have to Google a little bit and then you're off to the races. And that's it for this video, guys. So this was the last video to do with our interactive 1 GHz retro gaming machine. It's already been disassembled. All the parts have been stashed away. The case is back in its box. And I'll be back to doing videos to do with the slot uh, one platform. I've got a couple of CPUs lined up. I've also got a couple of uh, sponsored videos I have to go through. So that's all happening in the next few weeks. So thanks for watching. Thanks for the support. And I see you soon with another video.